Guys, if you've spent any time on the internet at all, I can guarantee that at some point you've come across a stan or two. Whether it's from seeing fan cams of Jimin or Jungkook spammed underneath random tweets that have nothing to do with K-pop, or from being the metaphorical prey of the predatory hive mind of extreme fans. Today, I'm going to talk to you guys about stands and stand culture in general, and how I think it narrowly toes the line between having a passion and love for someone or something that you deep down know will never love you back, and, well, devoting your life to someone or something, uh, much like they are a god or a cult leader, who you draw smutty fan art of. For those that don't know what stands are, or how the word stan has come to mean what it means today, well, <laughs> it all started with the 2000 Eminem song, which just so happens to be called Stan. Isn't that crazy? Wow. In this song, Eminem receives a bunch of letters from this one fan uh, named Stan, obviously, uh, and this guy is, well, he's a little bit obsessive toward Eminem. I'm not going to go over every single detail about the music video and the song itself because it's a pretty good watch, but basically uh, the guy goes completely off the rails and, well, commits some crimes, uh, all in the name of Eminem because Eminem was just not responding to this guy's letters and he felt entitled to a response. Uh, which brings us to present day. Um, yeah, stands, well, <laughs> they occupy pretty much every corner of the internet imaginable, um, whether you like it or not. <laughs> yeah, uh, if you have any hot takes about a song, movie, show, YouTuber, whatever, uh, you better be prepared for all the private quote tweets you're going to get in response. One group of stands that uh, frequently uses the power of private quote tweets uh, is a more recently formed one, and uh, it's chosen the Minecraft YouTuber and speedrunner Dream and uh, the friends that he plays Minecraft with as their all-powerful leaders. So over the course of the apocalypse that was 2020, uh, Dream and his server blew up on YouTube and Twitch where he streamed Minecraft speedruns and role-playing content with him and his friends on the Dream SMP. Um, yeah, uh, by the way, SMP stands for, uh, Survival Multiplayer, uh, yeah, so, if you're not a Minecraft expert like me, I, I wouldn't expect you to know that kind of thing, you know. Since blowing up, Dream has accumulated an insane 24 million subscribers on YouTube and 5.1 million Twitch followers at the time I'm recording this, um, which puts him near the top 100 YouTube channels in terms of most subscribers, and it puts him 16th on Twitch in followers. Holy shit. Yeah, that's crazy. Um, all for some fucking Minecraft. Sweet. Dream isn't the only person from his server to have an astronomical rise either, with cr other creators like Tommy Init and George Not Found. Uh, who each have 10 million and 8.8 .8 million subscribers on YouTube, respectively. Uh, this server has been a massive hit among teens, uh, mostly in like the middle school to high school age, which, well, <laughs> that's where kind of where I think this issue begins. <laughs> yeah, so the, uh, the stance of this Dream SMP, well, they're a little obsessive. <laughs> They partake in, you know, typical super fan behavior that we've all seen before, like, you know, writing fan fiction, uh, having active discourse about the server, uh, running fan pages revolving around the creators in the Dream SMP, which to me, is all good and fine, as long as it's not creepy or predatory or anything. Which all Dream stands abide by, right? Right? So yeah, uh, not all dream stands fall in this threshold. Uh, I would say there's a very loud minority of dream stands that uh, that engage in very invasive, inappropriate, and illegal behavior regarding the members of the Dream SMP. 
Uh, I think the most egregious offense of this is how some stands wrote some sexual fan fiction about one of the members of the server, uh, Tommy Innit, who, how do I put this lightly, um, is a minor. And it ain't talking the Minecraft type. So yeah, yeah, I should not have to explain why, why writing uh, smut about a minor is a big fat no-no. So I will not, because there's plenty of content out there already explaining that situation better than I ever could, and I don't want to make my whole video about that, uh, and I just want to use it as an example of how out of hand things can get in a fan base when creators uh, don't really do anything to prevent that kind of thing from happening. Which brings me to my next point, <laughs> which is that if you have a following, whether or not it's from YouTube, Twitch, movies, music, whatever, you have a responsibility to not enable your fans to do things like that, um, especially when you have a fan base that is at an impressionable age. Uh, in other words, if you have a younger demographic like Dream does, you should do more to enforce boundaries and make sure that they respect you as a person and that they don't develop a sort of connection that makes them feel like you, the content creator, and them, the fan, are more than just that, a content creator and a fan. And personally, I don't think that Dream and his friends do enough to make sure their fans understand that they are just fans and nothing more. Um, this is not an isolated scenario either. Like, there have been so many examples of creators or celebrities not having the proper respect and boundaries between them and their fans. Whether that's because of the person themselves, management that values profit and image more than the person they're managing, or because of the invasive nature of things like tabloids, paparazzi, and social media. And I think it's safe to assume that this lack of boundary between public figures and fans uh, has developed because of things like tabloids, paparazzi, and social media, and not because of the fans directly, because there's a lot of things that could cause fans, especially younger ones, to become very attached to these figures. And when people don't have a well-facilitated fan base, well, that is where things get a little bit ugly. I'm gonna wait until that truck leaves. I could go more into depth about Dream's fan base specifically, and how many kind of shady things there are going on in there with how Dream kind of seems like he's a bit exploitative of his younger viewers and shit like that, but I feel like that would need its own video, you know? Instead, I want to talk about the fan bases of musicians and how I think that a lot of times those fans will forget that musicians are people too. Whether it's the weird deifying of certain artists like Taylor Swift, Beyonce, Kanye West, or the complete lack of human decency shown toward people like Justin Bieber, like when a bunch of fans found his apartment and waited for him outside like he's a zoo animal of some sort. And I'm not saying shit like this is completely exclusive to Justin Bieber and that it doesn't happen to artists like the other ones I mentioned before. Certain artists like Taylor Swift, Beyonce, Kanye West. Or that Justin Bieber isn't subject to this kind of godlike worshipping. <laughs> um, but it's just that the Justin Bieber thing is like very recent. Along with that, uh, in the Bieber situation, <laughs> there's a video of him like asking fans to fuck off in the most respectful way possible. And you can see that the fans are just doing that like blank stare, mindless nod shit that you do when <laughs> your parents tell you to stop beating up your little brother when you're a kid. Guys, literally like right after he gives a speech about like this being his space. Listen to what this girl says. Like, this... <laughs> it seems like a joke, but it's not. It's, it, it's real life. Like, this would be in like... Some kind of sketch or something, but... But no, this is reality. This is how people are actually acting. So yeah, this is just another one of those ways that fans can go way too far for whatever artist is their favorite or whatever. 
This next one is not as bad depending on how you look at it, but by no means am I saying that it's good because it's really not. Um, and that is the blind loyalty and hive-minded attacks that Stan's blessed everybody on the internet with. <laughs> yeah, it definitely does not ruin the internet experience for everyone else at all. Not one bit. Definitely not at all. It is so great. I love it when that happens. When I think about this kind of thing, the first groups of fans that come to mind are Taylor Swift fans and Kanye West fans, ironically. Uh, <laughs> and that's just because of how close I've been to both communities throughout my entire life. You know, like everyone in school growing up was either a Kanye West fan or a Taylor Swift fan and never both. <laughs> ah, yes, <laughs> the two genders, Taylor and Kanye. And it's honestly kind of funny how linked these two fan bases have always been. I'm <laughs> going all the way back to the uh... VMA incident. Yeah, so basically, uh, Kanye fans will do whatever they can to defend the man, even after he says the worst things. That's right, we don't forget the TMZ incident, or the MAGA shit, and the restricting people's rights in the name of religion shit. We all remember Kanye. We'll never forget. Never fucking forget, man. N Dude, that's a fucking loud ass car. I hate that. Why the fuck? Why, why in this society have we decided that loud car equals cool? Cause it's fucking me up, man. It's fucking up my video. It's like the sixth time I've had to stop. <laughs> yeah, hardcore Kanye fans are like those rise and grind, millionaire motivation Instagram page type dudes and how they just defend people like Jeff Bezos and like Elon Musk. No questions asked uh, when they're literally tearing apart our society as we speak. <laughs> and I can guarantee that there's quite a bit of overlap between Kanye fans and these grind set freaks. <laughs> Now onto the Taylor Swift stands. Um, I consider Taylor Swift stands to be one of, if not the most powerful groups of people on the internet uh, ever. <laughs> they have the ability to infiltrate any area of the internet at any time and don't even think about posting anything about other musicians when Taylor Swift's got an upcoming release. Uh, you will feel the unrelenting, burning hatred from some Taylor Swift stands. <laughs> Uh, and for some reason, <laughs> it always feels a bit racially motivated to me. Now, I don't really have any hard evidence of this, but uh, when Brockhampton was getting ready to drop a new album last spring, uh, I do remember seeing a lot of people tweeting at uh, the lead member of Brockhampton, Kevin Abstract, uh, things along the lines of, oh honey, take this week off, it's Taylor's week. And then like the the less than heart, the less than three heart thing, whatever, you know, you know, I fucking mean, you know, we're on the same fucking page, you know, um, <laughs> and just something about that felt so bad. Like it just made me feel gross. <laughs> um, especially because Taylor was only dropping like remastered versions of old songs. Um, and Brockhampton was releasing you know, a very emotional and open album about like losing loved ones and race in America. And to see a flock of predominantly white Taylor Swift fans telling a black man to take the back seat to a white person, uh, especially when he's dropping an album that is arguably more important than anything Taylor Swift has ever dropped. <laughs> it, it just it doesn't sit well with me. Like, it makes me feel pretty confident in the assumption that it was a Taylor Swift stand that started the, uh, the Blackout Tuesday thing back in June 2020. Uh, you know, the thing that completely drowned out any information about the Black Lives Matter movement and protests and stuff like that going on at the time. You know, just that, um, with just how absolutely tone deaf it was. So yeah. <laughs> All that stupid black square that everybody posted did was show that most people don't actually care about the important issues, but more about how bad it would look if they posted a beach day photo a week after another black man was killed for being black. So yeah, I don't know. Uh, that's just the vibe I get from Taylor Swift stands. <laughs> you know, just a, just a gut feel. And I get a bad vibe from a lot of aspects of stand culture. 
uh, because most of the time it really crosses the line between having a healthy relationship with being a fan and being way too involved in the lives of random people. And obviously, when I say all this bad stuff about stands, I don't mean all of these people's fans at all times. Like, obviously, you know. Like, being a passionate fan of a YouTuber or musician or actor or whatever, it's natural, and I've done it before, obviously. But when that fandom reaches the next level, that is when I think it goes way too far. Like, there is no reason anyone should be going to a celebrity's house or writing smut about a real person who isn't a character, especially when they're a minor, <laughs> or backing somebody up after they do or say the worst thing imaginable just because you like a song or video of theirs. That to me is where I think it goes from being, you know, just a regular fan to being the guy who ties up his girlfriend and drives off a bridge at the end of an Eminem video. Uh, that is also where I think this video ends. Huh? Uh, yeah, that's it. <laughs> that's all I got for today. Um, as you can see, uh, this video is not filmed in front of a green screen. Um, and that is because green screen videos uh, fucking suck to make. Yeah. Uh, and I want to be able to make videos, you know, faster and more consistently. And the editing process for those green screen videos makes that goal a teeny bit more difficult to achieve. So, in the meantime, I will be making more videos in this format, and that's gonna be until I can really figure out how to edit faster and shit like that. Um, so yeah, I, I hope you guys enjoy this video. Um, <laughs> send this to a hardcore dream or Taylor Swift stand so I can get free engagement off their inability to take criticism. Um, and if you are a dream or Taylor Swift stan, uh, please tell me how ugly I am in the comments, uh, because I think it's really funny. Uh, like and subscribe. Okay, bye.